Um, our second speaker this afternoon is Eloise Halmington, who will tell us about cohomology of GIT questions, reductive and non-reductive. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Um, thanks to the organizers for um, organizing the workshop and for um, inviting me to speak. So I will share my screen now. Um, this. Uh, hopefully that's okay now. Okay, so um, so Vicky in her talk explained how um, non-reductive GIT enables the construction of um, quotients for a certain class of non-reductive group actions and how that can be used to construct new moduli spaces. So my talk will follow on from Vicky's talk in the sense that we'll shift our focus from the question of um, constructing quotients and moduli spaces to the question of um, constructing of sorry studying the geometry of those moduli spaces. So often when, when we think about uh, classical GIT we um, sort of think of it as a powerful theory for for constructing moduli spaces in algebraic geometry but it's also a very powerful theory for studying the geometry of moduli spaces which can be constructed as as GIT quotients. So roughly speaking, the, the idea is that if a moduli space can be constructed as a, as a GIT quotient, then often its um, geometry, which is probably quite complicated, can be described in terms of the geometry of the parameter space. And the parameter space is often um, a space whose geometry is much easier to describe. So the, the main idea that I want to try to convey in this talk is that non-reductive GIT has the same feature. So namely that it can be it's a powerful theory for constructing moduli spaces but also it um, it's a powerful theory for studying the geometry of those um, moduli spaces which can be constructed as um, non-reductive GIT quotients. So when I say um, geometry of, of moduli spaces I, I really mean the cohomology the rational cohomology so I'll be working over complex um, complex varieties over the complex numbers um, and uh, the other thing I want to say is that even though the talk sort of kind of follows on quite naturally from Vicky's talk, um, I won't assume any kind of prior knowledge of, of non-reductive GIT. So I'll start um, with a quick um, introduction to so that I can be a little bit more precise about the question that I'm interested in. So in, in classical GIT, the setup um, is the following. So we have a reductive group G and um, a projective variety X. And we suppose that G acts um, linearly on, on X with respect to some ample line bundle. So the, the main result of, of GIT is, is the kind of can be summarized in the following picture. So the idea is that the, the group being reductive ensures that the invariants are finitely generated. So we can take the, the projective variety associated to that and we get a, a projective quotient. And the um, inclusion of the invariants gives us a, a rational map from X, which restricts to a, a good quotient on the semi-stable locus. And if we want um, an, an orbit space, um, then we can further restrict to the stable locus. And that's what we get, which is called a, a geometric quotient for the action of, of G on the stable locus. Um, and when, if we start off with X being smooth, then we can ask, um, what can we say about the, the, the rational cohomology of the quotient? Um, so the, um, the, the, this is the question which I've, which I've written down here. And um, the answer is going to depend on, on whether or not the semi-stable locus strictly contains the stable locus or not. So if the, um, the semi-stable locus is equal to the stable locus, which is the, the best case, then the, um, the quotient can have at worst finite quotient singularities. And from a homology perspective, it behaves like a smooth variety and we can ask about its, its rational cohomology. Um, the things get more complicated when the semi-stable locus strictly contains the stable locus because then the quotient can have very bad singularities and um, we sort of need to use different tools to study to study the, the cohomology. We need to be more careful about what we mean about the cohomology. But basically the, the whole point of the talk is going to be to um, this question of how do we pass from the geometry of X, the cohomology of X, to the cohomology of the quotient, both in the, in the reductive case and in the non-reductive case. Um, so as I, as I just mentioned, there, there are two scenarios to consider, um, the scenario where semi-stability is equal to stability and the other case where it isn't. Um, and, I, and I've put these conditions um, in quotation marks because 
Um, it's, it's clear what they mean in the classical case, but in the non-reductive case, um, there are analog, uh, analogs of, of this condition, and I'll explain what, what they are. Um, but in both, for both parts of the talk, um, they will be split into two halves, so the, the, where we consider the reductive case and when we consider the, the non-reductive case. So I will start then with the kind of best case, which is when, when semi-stability coincides with stability and when we have a reductive group. So the data which I start with is a reductive group G and a projective variety X. And I suppose that G acts linearly on X and I've just written down, written this in this, in this way. Um, and I assume that the semi-stable locus coincides with the stable locus. So taking the picture from the, from the previous slide, but with this extra assumption, um, we get this picture here and we're in the nicest possible case where the projective GIT quotient is also in orbit space. Um, and the, the point is that if X is smooth, then the, the rational cohomology of the quotient will coincide, will be isomorphic to the um, G equivariant uh, rational cohomology of the semi-stable locus. So this um, equivariant cohomology is defined is defined like this, where um, EG is the universal um, classifying bundle for G. So, um, so right. So the, the question is: so in the case where X is smooth, we basically to work out the the rational cohomology of the of the quotient. It's enough to to compute the rational the equivariant cohomology of the semi-stable locus. Um, and the question is: well, how can we work it out knowing the the cohomology of x only and um that's the so for this whole talk i i was talking earlier about about rational cohomology but really what i'm going to focus on is just the poincare series which um encodes the the betty numbers and so the question is um can we compute the the equivariant poincare series for the semi-stable locus in terms of the equivariant poincare series for x oh yes and i and i've put a definition there of the um of the poincare series of a of a variety um, so the answer to the question is that yes, we can um, calculate the, I mean, we can, we can do this calculation using the GIT and stability stratification of X. So in the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll state what this um, instability stratification is, which is, um, was also um, described by, by Vicky in her talk. So this is a, a theorem that's due to, well, partly to, to Kerwan, um, which is built on previous results. But there exists, the point is that there exists a G equivariant stratification of X, which I write like this. Um, so that sort of satisfies the following property. So there exists this unique open stratum, um, S0, which coincides with the semi-stable locus. And then if um, beta is non-zero, then every unstable stratum can be written in this form. So here, um, these were, were defined much more precisely by Vicky, but what I'm going to say about them is that um, y beta SS is a, is a locally closed um, subvariety of X, and, and P beta is a parabolic subgroup of G. Um, the other thing uh, that's important from the point of view of saying cohomology is that for every uh, beta non zero, there exists a locally trivial um, vibration from this variety, which I mentioned earlier, to this other variety um, with affine fibers. And so here, this Z beta SS, it's the um, semi-stable locus for the action of a certain maximal reductive subgroup called stat beta of P beta on a closed um, subvariety of, of X. So that's all I'm going to say about that stratification, but we really need those properties for what's to come. So um, I've copied out the theorem there, um, but in the case where X is smooth, then we also know that um, S beta and Z beta are going to be smooth as well. And um, the stratification is um, equivariantly perfect. So this was proven by um, Francis and her thesis. And what this means is that we have this equality of equivariant Poincaré series, um, which is uh, I've written down there. And the D of beta is the co-dimension of S beta. So here I've written down this um, equality under the assumption that S beta is connected. Um, otherwise, um, the formula is just a little bit more complicated, but the idea remains the same. Um, okay. So, um, right. So uh, still under the assumption that X is smooth, then 
the, we can use this theorem to rewrite the equivariant cohomology of, of S beta. Um, so by the second point here, which is this isomorphism of S beta with this, this thing here, we, we can um, identify it with the, the P beta equivariant cohomology for, for Y beta SS. And then we can use part three, this, this um, retraction to, to identify it with the um, stab beta equivariant cohomology of Z beta SS. Um, so, so using this and kind of combining that with this uh, equality over there, we obtain an inductive formula for the, the um, Poincaré series of the quotient. So we knew from earlier that it's, it's this equivariant Poincaré series. And um, basically, I'm just uh, replacing um, this, this uh, equivariant Poincaré series by, by the one corresponding for the stab beta action on, on Z beta SS. Um, and this is inductive in the sense that um, we have this, this lower dimensional group acting on a, on a lower dimensional variety. So we could then reapply the same formula to work out the, um, this, the equivariant Poincaré series for the semi-stable locus in terms of um, closed subvarieties, those for closed subvarieties of X. Um, and as for the, if, if, what we only, if we only really start with the, the Poincaré series of X, then um, assuming that G is, is connected, then, then it's this simple, we can write it in this simple way. Um, and if it's not connected, it's just a little bit more complicated to write down, but there's still a, a formula for it. Um, so um, in this talk, I'm sort of, it's quite theoretical in the sense that it's all about obtaining these formula. And it might seem um, hard to believe that they can be useful in practice for actually calculating things um, uh, the cohomology of moduli spaces. So at each stage, I sort of want to try to give an application. So, so here the application I'll give is um, due to um, Francis Cohen, I think it was 85. And it's the, the calculation of the Poincaré series for the moduli space of semi-stable um, vector bundles. So, uh, um, so here, right, this is the, the moduli space of semi-stable vector bundles of um, co-prime rank and degree on a smooth projective curve sigma. So this co-primality condition is, is um, crucial because it um, enables the, um, uh, it, it, sorry, the, the co-primality condition basically um, in, uh, means that the semi-stable locus, in the, once you've kind of set the problem up using GIT, will coincide with the, with the stable locus. Um, so it's kind of the, the perfect setting to try to apply, apply this formula and um, indeed it, it can be done. Um, okay, so that's what I want to say about the, um, the semi-stable equal to stable case in the, in the reductive setting. So now I will move on to the, um, the non-reductive setting, which is when um, semi-stability is equal to stability, but um, the group is, is non-reductive. So the setup um, is uh, the following. So we have um, a group, which I'm going to call U hat, which is the, the semi-direct product of um, a unipotent group with um, a multiplicative group. And the, the condition, so this is what Vicky had um, presented as, as, as um, groups with graded unipotent radical. So here I'm assuming that the GM acts on the Lie algebra of U with um, strictly positive weights. So this is the, the grading condition. Um, and I am going to suppose that this U hat acts um, linearly on a projective variety X. Um, with respect to a very ample line bundle. So normally we just assume ample, but if we, by taking a tensor power, we can assume that it's, it's very ample. Um, and the reason why I, I want to make that assumption is just because I want to write X as a, as a closed subvariety of this um, projective space associated to the global sections for the, um, the very ample line bundle. So for simplicity, I'm just going to call V this um, space of sections. Um, and now I will um, give some, some definitions which are required in order to state the, the main theorem of non-reductive GIT. So the first um, thing to define is we can consider the action of the GM on this space V because the, the action is linear and we can uh, consider the minimal weight space for this action. So that's what we define as being uh, V min. And then um, we define Z min to just be the the projectivized version of Vman intersected with X. Um, and finally, the last um, subvariety of X that I want to define is um, what I call X0min, or what is called X0min, 
Um, and that consists of the set of all points in X who, um, which flow to, to Z min under the, the GM action, taking um, limits at zero. So another way to think about it is that there is the, the GM action on X induces a, a bielanicki birula stratification. And so this Z min would be a component of the fixed point set for the GM action. And X not min would be the, the, open, um, the open stratum of things which flow to Z min. Um, so now I can state the, the theorem um, of the kind of the, the, the building block of non-reductive GIT. So I've, I've um, copied out the, the definition up here again. And um, so the theorem is due to Berksy, Kerwan, Doron, and Hall. So I, I, I've written 2020 here. Um, this is the, the most recent version of the paper, but the theorem has, has existed for a few, a few years now. Um, and so, so as Vicky had explained, in, in general, when we have um, this linear action of, of u hat on x, because u hat is, is not reductive, um, the invariance may not be finitely generated. And um, in fact, many other things can go wrong, even if the invariants are finitely generated. But the, the result says that provided a condition um, is satisfied, and so this, this is the condition, which is the analog of semi-stability being equal to stability. So it's the um, condition that for every Z in this um, closed subvariety Z min, if the U stabilizer, if the U stabilizes a trivial, then um, we need to do something else, which is um, that we need to take a, a, a possibly take a tensor power of the linearization and, and twist it by a, a suitable character of U hat. So this is um, related. Well, this is exactly the kind of notion of adaptiveness and well adaptiveness, which which Vicky was talking about. Um, and so I'm not going to um, go into too much detail, but it's it's sort of the key. Um, it's it's something which we have to do in order to obtain the, the result. Um, but the the point is that if we if we modify the linearization in this in this prescribed way, and if I if I let um, L prime denote this new linearization, then provided it's modified in this kind of appropriate way, then the invariants end up being finitely generated, and so we can. Um, define the projective variety associated to that and um, we get this uh, this non-reductive um, uh, what's called the non-reductive GIT quotient for the U hat action on X um, and we can consider the inclusion of the um, invariance inside the homogeneous ring um, for X which induces this this rational map from X and just as in classical GIT we can sort of ask um, uh, on what open subset it restricts to a, to a morphism and um, this is the, 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 the reason for calling this condition semi-stability equal to stability is that actually the, the, the projective quotient here ends up being an orbit space for the action of U hat on this um, semi-stable locus. And the, the, the key point is that this semi-stable locus can be described very explicitly and it's, um, it's X not min, so this open stratum for the bielanicki virula stratification from which we take away the U sweep of of Zbin, and this is um, what we, we can say is the analog of the Hilbert Mumford criterion of classical GIT. Because another way to, to write this is um, as the intersection um, of of the um, if we sort of take the semi-stable locus for the for the GM action with respect to this modified um, linearization L prime. Um, okay, so that's that's the really the the building block of, of non-reductive GIT and um, in the case that I'm interested in, which is when, when X is smooth, then what we get is that the, the, co the cohomology of the quotient will be isomorphic to the U hat equivariant cohomology of the semi-stable locus um, because we know it's, a, it's an orbit space. And so at worst, it can have, um, only, we can have only finite quotient singularities. Um, so, so that's telling us that if we want to work out the, the cohomology of the quotient, it's enough to work out the, the U hat equivariant cohomology of the of the semi-stable locus. And so then we can ask, well, how can we work that out knowing the, um, the cohomology of X itself? Um, so that's the question which um, uh, I want to try to um, talk about now. So, um, so I've copied down this kind of picture um, and what we're interested in computing and how we want to do that. So, now I, I will state a theorem that's um, from another paper about, uh, about non-reductive GIT from by Berksy and, and Kerwan from, from this year. 
Um, so here we assume that that X is smooth. And um, this time, so in the reductive case, we were looking at the, the GIT instability stratification and showing that it was equivalently perfect. In the non-reductive case, the stratification which we want to look at is, is this stratification. So it's, it's simpler. Um, it's actually a stratification just of X naught min into a semi-stable locus and the, the U super Z min. So based on this description of the semi-stable locus up here. And what they show is that this uh, stratification is equivalently perfect. So again, this just means that the, we have this equality of, of Poincaré series, um, except, sorry, I forgot the, the, the U hat over here. It should be the, the U hat equivariant. Um, Poincaré series of x naught min. Um, so what is um, d here, it's the co-dimension of the u sweep of z min inside, inside x. Um, okay, so we have um, in, this, in this setting, we have that the, so again, the Poincaré series of the quotient is the u hat equivariant um, uh, cohomology of the semi-stable locus, and just using the formula above, we can rewrite it um, like this. And um, we can use the fact that x naught min retracts onto z min um, via the, the GM action and the fibers are just these um, are affine. And so what we get this, um, the U hat uh, equivariant Poincaré series for x naught min is just the GM equivariant Poincaré series for z min. Um, and we can sort of do a similar thing um, for, for, for the U super z min and rewrite it in this way. So, so then um, we can further simplify this um, this uh, equation here, and what we get is that the, the Poincaré series of the, the U hat quotient is um, is just this, this fraction times the Poincaré series of, of Z min. So we can sort of compare this to the um, to the to the classical case where we had an, an inductive formula for the for the cohomology of the um, of the GIT equation. In this case, the situation is much simpler in the sense that. The, the cohomology of the quotient is, is captured by the cohomology of this sub variety of uh, Z min of X, which is a, a component of the fixed point set for the GM action. So if we know the, the Poincaré series for X, then we can work out from that what the Poincaré series for Z min is, and then we can work out what the, the Poincaré series of the, of the quotient is. Um, so this is this is very nice and sort of one, one um, instance where, where the kind of um, the non-reductive setting is somehow easier than the, the classical setting. Um, and, and as promised, I will sort of give an, an application, which is what um, Greg will be talking about in his talk later on. So I will say very little, but um, there is an application of this theory um, to the polynomial hyperbolicity conjecture. So it's not quite an application of the result which I've stated here, but actually um, Strong, a stronger result, but still in the same paper that I'm quoting the result from. So it's a result um, concerning intersection theory um, on the cohomology um, of a compactification of a, of a space of, so the, in order to kind of um, make advances on this conjecture, it's um, interesting to consider compactifications of um, spaces of jet differential um, bundles. And the, the, what they do is that they construct this um, compact, a new compact as a, a U hat um, non reductive GIT quotient. And um, thanks to results about the, that, they, that they prove about the intersection theory on the cohomology of such quotients, they're able to, um, to prove this, this, this conjecture. So I, I won't say any more because um, it's not my area of expertise, and, and Greg will be um, giving a talk about this just after me. Um, okay, so, so now um, we'll, I'll talk about the a uh, case where um, semi-stability is not equal to stability and um, starting with the reductive case. So here, um, the, what I'm, the data that I'm going to start with is um, <coughs> G, uh, a reductive group, which is acting linearly on a projector variety X. And now I'm going to assume that the uh, stable locus is strictly contained in the state, uh, semi-stable locus. Um, and also I'm going to assume that the stable locus is non-empty. So there is at least one, one stable point. And I'll explain um, why this, is, this, is, um, this uh, assumption is necessary. So in this case, um, we have this uh, picture of the kind of the classical picture with the strict inequality. And the point is that if, um, if x, so because there are strictly, if x is smooth, even if x is smooth, the presence of 
strictly semi-stable points um, basically means that the quotient can have these very bad quotient singularities. And so in, um, in 18, 1985, Francis Kerwin um, uh, published the, the partial desingularization construction, which is a way of um, partially desingularizing this quotient in the sense of resolving the singularities that come from the presence of strictly semi-stable points. Mm. So what this construction um, gives us is that it's the construction the, the construction. Does someone have a question? Okay, maybe not. Um, the so the construction tells us that there exists um, a sequence of blowups which we can do, and which uh, result in this variety x tilde, which admits um, a linear action of G, so that for that linear action, semi-stability coincides with stability. So that means that I can draw a picture like this for the action of the linear action of G on X tilde, and um, and we have uh, this um, this quotient here, which will be an, an orbit space for the action of G on the stable locus. Um, and what we can do is, if if E denotes the exceptional divisor, then we can consider the complement of the exceptional divisor in the stable locus, which will also have a geometric quotient. And then there is this there are these isomorphisms. So this um, complement will, will be isomorphic to the stable locus, and this geometric quotient will be isomorphic to the to the geometric quotient downstairs. Um, and it's a partial desing. So the partial desingularization we're cons considering is this: we have this um, this other projective completion of the of the orbit space, and that is the partial um, desingularization, which is a, a birational to the to the original GIT quotient. So um, I, in order to be able to um, talk about how to calculate the, um, so the idea for calculating the, the Poincaré series of the, the, the quotient will be to um, go via the, the Poincaré series of the, um, the partial desingularization. But if we um, want to do that, we need to be sure that if we start with something smooth, we end up with something smooth. And so to, to explain um, why that's true, I need to give you more details about the actual desingularization construction and how this map um, pi is constructed. So how does the construction go? So the first step is we, so the, what, what we're trying to do is to basically remove um, the, the presence of, of stabilizer, of non-trivial stabilizer groups for um, semi-stable points, because that's what makes points unstable, oh, sorry, uh, that, that is what makes points not stable, therefore strictly semi-stable. Um, so first we have to pick a reductive, a connected reductive subgroup in G of maximal dimension amongst those such subgroups which satisfy the property that they fix a point that's semi-stable in X. Um, and then the first blow up that we do is we basically take the G sweep of the of the intersection of the fixed point set for R with the semi stable locus. Um, we take a certain closure. So the closure. So um, this is a little bit subtle, but really we need to um, desingularize um, the closure. But um, it, it's not so so important for, for what I'm interested in. But we, we define this X1 to be the blow up of X along this closed closed sub variety. Um, and we need to make sure that that if we started with the G a linear G action, we end up with something that has a linear G action. And the, the linear, linearization that we take on the on the blow up is if we denote by pi the, the blow up map, then we pull back some um, large tensor power of the initial linearization and we tensor that with um with this um uh, divisor. And um, this will have an induced action of, of G. Um, and that's the linearization of the G action that we consider. And the key point is that having done this blow up, um, there does not exist any uh, subgroup R prime that's conjugate to R so that R prime fixes a point in the semi-stable locus for this X1. So that means that the situation has somehow gotten better in a sense. Um, so the, the next step is to kind of keep improving the situation. So we want to repeat this first step iteratively for all subgroups in a set um, of representatives of um, conjugacy classes of connected reductive subgroups of G, which have maximal dimension 
amongst those which fix a point um, in this semi-stable locus. And the, the key point here is that this set is, is finite and that's because um, G is reductive. Um, so it means that after finitely many steps, we, we reach um, a variety which has no subgroup of kind of this maximal dimension fixing a semi-stable point. So once, once we've done that, then we pass to the next highest dimension of, of, um, of connected reductive subgroups, which fix a point in the semi-stable locus of X. And we continue to do this until we basically reach a variety X tilde so that no point of X tilde of the semi-stable points in X tilde is fixed by a non-trivial um, connected reductive subgroup of G. And then um, with a little bit of work, uh, we can show that that implies that the semi-stable locus for X tilde coincides with the, the stable locus. Um, okay, so, um, so I've, I've copied uh, the, the construction there again. And the, the question is, well, if we, if we started off with, um, so again, what we really want is to understand the, um, the Poincaré series of the quotient. Um, and we started off with, with X here and we managed to construct a, a blow up of X um, so that the quotient of that blow up um, has at worst finite quotient singularities. But the, oh, sorry, this, this will only be true if actually X tilde is smooth. Um, and so this is something which, which um, Frances Cohen shows in her paper where she gives this construction, which is that if you start off with X smooth, then X tilde is also smooth. So because we're talking about blow ups, it's sufficient to show that basically at each stage what you're what you're blowing up is smooth. Um, and given that the blow ups kind of at least closures of, of things of this form, really it's enough to show that this um, this uh, sub variety is smooth. Um, and here we, we really, really need the fact that R is, is reductive. Um, if R is reductive, then uh, there's a classical result which tells us that the fixed point set in, in X is also going to be smooth. Um, and that's to do with being able to linearize the action around a, a fixed point set. Um, the, the other thing which we, which we need um, to, to conclude smoothness is um, what this G sweep looks like. And what um, is shown in the paper is that this, the G sweep of this intersection is isomorphic to the quotient of a, the product. Um, and here N is the normalizer of R in G. Um, and the result basically follows from the fact that N acts freely on this, on this product. And so if we know that this is smooth and that G is smooth, then we'll get that the product is also, is also smooth. Um, so the upshot is that if we started off with X smooth, then the, um, the uh, equivariant, uh, sorry, the cohomology of the GIT quotient the, of the partial desingularization will be isomorphic to the equivariant cohomology of the, of the semi-stable locus. Um, so, so that's telling us that basically it's enough to compute this equivariant Poincaré series, um, we, from the case where, um, from the uh, sort of earlier in the talk, we, we know we have this inductive formula for going from X to the semi-stable locus. So really the, the missing piece is this, um, how do we pass from the equivariant um, Poincaré series for the semi-stable locus to the, um, to this uh, equivariant Poincaré series there. Um, and so that's the, the next, the next uh, natural question. So, um, I will now, uh, so in order to give a formula for this, um, for, for, for this arrow here, um, it's helpful to consider basically um, each step in the blow up. So the first blow up, if you remember, was this, um, we, blow, we blow up X along this, this closed sub variety. Um, and the point is that there exists formula for computing Poincaré series of blow ups. So the, the Poincaré series of that, of the, and it works um, equivariantly too. So the so basically, we have the, the Poincaré series of, of what we're blowing up, um, and we add the Poincaré series of the exceptional divisor, and then we remove the, the Poincaré series at the center of the blow up. So, I mean, this is actually, this would be true um, as is uh, without kind of further justification if I didn't have the semi-stable locus everywhere. Um, and actually obtaining the kind of analog, um, the, the analogous equality where we insert semi-stability everywhere is, is, is non-trivial. And it's, it's, um, it's a lot of work to sort of show that the linearization has been picked in the right way, that the equality at the level of just the, the varieties without considering the semi-stable locus actually gives us an equality in this way. Um, but luckily we sort of do um, get this, this nice formula. And that's what Francis shows in the, in the paper. And so we can um, iterate this 
um, and so that we obtain a, a formula for the for the, the kind of end uh, end result. So we have this. Um, so this time um, I'm going to write it as this. So we have the the equivariant Poincaré series of the semi-stable locus, and we add to that the contribution from all the exceptional divisors, and we take away the contribution from all of the centers of the blowups. So to just explain the notation a little bit more. Um, what this uh, curly R is, it's basically a set of um, representatives of conjugacy classes of um, subgroups of G, which um, fix a point in uh, the semi-stable locus. And the, um, what, these, uh, what this um, tilde notation um, means, it's just uh, taking proper transforms of, of, the, um, of the exceptional devices. Um, so we can this this formula can sort of be be um, kind of played around with to to I mean to sort of give a formula that's easier to actually apply in practice, but um, this sort of gives the spirit of the of the computation. So um, as promised, another another application. So here the application is the same as the application which I um, mentioned earlier regarding the moduli space of, of semi-stable vector bundles, but this time. Um, in the case where the rank and the degree are not co-prime. So rank and the degree not co-prime means that in the GIT setup for the problem, semi-stability is not equal to stability. And so this is a, the right setting for applying um, this uh, theory. Um, oh yes, so so I've just <laughs> added an arrow here. So um, the so I explained, so this formula tells us how to work out the Poincaré series of this partial decentralization, but I mean, which is, which is um, good to have, but really what we want is the, the Poincaré series of the, of, the, um, of the original GIT quotient. But the issue is that um, if the, the semi-stable locus strictly contains a stable locus, this might be highly singular. And so what we actually want to consider is the, um, the intersection cohomology of it. And so the intersection Poincaré polynomial. Um, and in a, in, a, in a kind of not the same paper as the partial desingularization paper, um, but another one, um, Francis Cohen explains how to go back down. So the idea is that this partial desingularization can it itself be expressed as a blow up of the original GIT quotient. And one can kind of travel down and, and work out from the Poincaré series of this, the intersection Poincaré series of the quotient. Um, and again, this is kind of seems like a very complicated formula, but it can be applied in practice. So um, she obtains uh, the intersection Poincaré polynomial for the um, moduli space of semi-stable vector bundles on a, on a smooth projective curve when the, um, the rank and the degree are not co-prime. Okay, so now the kind of last, <laughs> the missing piece is just the case where semi-stability is not equal to stability, but in the non-reductive case. So, this is what um, something which I, I thought about during my, my PhD, um, and so the the um, setup that we need is um, so again we have this U hat which is a semi-direct product of of U with GM, um, and it, so GM acting with strictly positive weights on the Lie algebra of U. So this is the kind of the grading condition of non-reductive GIT, and we suppose that um, the group acts linearly on a projective variety. So the continuing, um, so I, I stated earlier the, the, non the theorem of non-reductive GIT um, in the best case where semi-stability coincides with stability, but the, the paper by Berksy, Dora, and um, Kerwin and Hawes gives, um, gives sort of further results even when the condition isn't satisfied. And um, Vicky was also, also talked about this in her talk, but just to, to remind you what this condition that semi-stability is equal to stability is, um, it's that um, the, the U stabilizers um, in, in X not min or Z min, it's equivalent, are always trivial. So if, if this condition isn't satisfied, um, but we still make another assumption, a sort of much, much weaker assumption, but we suppose that there is at least um, some Z inside Z min, which has trivial um, unipotent stabilizer. And one should think of this as the analog of the condition in classical GIT that there exists at least um, one stable point. Um, in fact, I just remember that I didn't tell you earlier why we um, made that assumption. So we have this blow up construction which takes us from X to X tilde, the existence of a stable point ensures that we end up with a non empty X tilde because it's possible that if we had no stable points that we end up with um, an X tilde which has no no stable points, no semi stable points and then the quotient is just um, 
we can't really say that it's a partial desingularization because it's just empty. So that's the relevance of the condition. And, and here as well, we have to make this analogous condition, uh, assumption, sorry. So, so having made this assumption, then, then the theorem says that there is a construction, which, um, so we start off with this variety X um, and uh, it tells us that there exists a sequence of blots, which we can do resulting in a, in a projective variety X hat, which itself has a linear action of U hat, so that for, for that linear action, the condition that um, semi-stability equal to stability is satisfied, and therefore we have the kind of nicest picture of, of non-reductive GIT. So, so then similarly to the, to the reductive case, we consider the complement of the exceptional divisor, um, and which has a, a geometric quotient, and we can um, define a kind of a stable locus inside X to, to be the image under the blow the blow up map of, of this complement and which will by construction have a, a geometric quotient. And um, the idea is that this, this quotient will have as a projective completion this, um, this non-reductive GIT quotient obtained after blowing up. So I, I think on the next slide, yes, I, I have a, a compared the kind of reductive and, and non-reductive case and we sort of see how the the the, the kind of construction is, is the result is very similar. The big difference is that when this condition isn't of semi-stability equal to stability isn't satisfied, um, it uh, in classical GIT, we still have a GIT quotient, whereas in non-reductive GIT, at least at the moment, um, there is no uh, analog of this, of this quotient. So instead of having two, um, two projective completions, as in the reductive case, we sort of have only one. Um, but we can still ask about the cohomology of, of this projective completion. And so that's what I will focus on for the, for the rest of the talk. Um, but so going back to here, if we want to work out what the, what the Poincaré series of this quotient is, and assuming that we start off with X being smooth, it's important that we know that X hat is also smooth. Um, so that's the, the key thing that one needs to show if we want to hope to get um, nice formula. And so the, the, the theorem here, so it's kind of very hard um, to show in, in, in general, um, but if I make the assumption that U is abelian and that uh, GM acts on the Lie algebra with a, a single um, weight, and it's going to be positive because we know the weights are strictly positive um, to, be, to have this grading, um, then the, the theorem is that if, if X is smooth, then this, so what this was is the, um, uh, the, the center, oh, I think, um, so, so here, the, the C max of um, X naught min U hat is the center of, the, um, of the, the, so I think I might have a slide missing here. Let me just check. Uh, yes, never mind. So, so the, to, to give a sense of what the, um, the construction here actually is, um, it's, so in the reductive case, we blow up, we start by blowing up along the um, fixed point sets for connected reductive subgroups of maximal dimension amongst those which fix um, points in the semi-stable locus. And in the, in the non-reductive case, the, the idea is exactly the same. The, the difference is that in the, in the reductive case, we had um, this, this um, result, which is that if the group is, is reductive, then there's only a finite number of conjugacy classes of groups that can appear as, um, as uh, stabilizer groups for points in X. And this is no longer true in the, in the non-reductive setting. So instead, um, what we have to do is we just, at the first stage, we blow up along the points in X not min, which have um, maximal dimension U stabilizer. And that's what um, I've denoted here as the points in, in X not min with maximal dimension stabilizer in U hat. And the, the key point in, in, the, in the proof of the theorem of, about these blow-ups is that once you do this, this blow-up, then the points in the, um, the X naught, in the new X naught min will have um, their maximal dimension stabilizer and you had will be strictly smaller than, than the original one. So, so the, if we want to show that the resulting blow-up is smooth, we need to show that the center of the, of the first blow-up is smooth. Um, and just a remark about this kind of uh, this uh, assumption that U is abelian. So in fact, it's not so um, restrictive in the sense that um, if we just start with an arbitrary U, then we can always find a filtration of, um, of U such that each um, quotient is abelian. 
and such that um, GM acts on the, the Lie algebra with um, a single weight. So this is something which we can do um, if we just start off with the, with the general U. And so what we can do is that um, we can, in this more general case, we can sort of apply the block construction um, iteratively across this filtration and we can quotient in stages so that we can obtain um, the corresponding result for general U. So the idea is we, if we have this filtration, we start off by doing the blow up for U1. And then once we've done the, the construction for U1, then we take the quotient by U1, and then we look at the action of U2 mod U1 on that and so on. Um, there are some, some subtleties um, and, and some technicalities to make to make this work, but essentially um, this, this result about smoothness should be um, sufficient to, to give the result in, in general. Um, that is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, I have a question, Alois. Yeah. That, and that is closed, right? Because this corresponds to the max, C max, is that, that's closed, right? Exactly, yeah. And, but in, it's closed in X uh, mean, or clo but not closed in X, or, or, or it's closed in X as well? Um, no, so it, it won't be closed in, in, in X. So we have to take a, a clo the closure when yeah. you blow up. Yeah, uh, in the closure. Yeah. It's sort of the same as in the reductive case where um, the closure might have um, sing singularities, I think, but then they don't matter in the end because they don't end up in the stable locus or, mm. or, or something like this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but this is yeah, this is because of the maximality condition. This is closed inside X norm in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so the to to give a sketch a sketch of the proof um, of this result. So the 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 first step is to reduce to the case where the maximal. So if I call d max um, of this the maximal dimension for u hat stabilizers in for points in X norm in, then. Um, so I'm, I want to reduce to the case where where it's actually the dimension of the group of the of the U hat group, um, and uh, oh, before I say what happens once we make that assumption, so the the idea is that um, if if it's if it's not basically we can take um, we can sort of quote the the, fact, the assumption that U is abelian allows us to find complementary subgroups. So if we take um, a subgroup, we take a, a subgroup that has maximal dimension amongst those subgroups which appear as stabilizers for points in X not min, we can basically quotient by, um, by that subgroup and um, we can sort of reduce to the case where um, stabilizers are trivial by, by kind of performing a quotient first. Um, so that's, that's the first step. And um, the idea is that once, once, we, once we make that assumption, then actually the, the, the center of the blow up is actually much, much simpler to, to describe, and it's just this intersection, the u fixed points uh, for x with um, z min. So what we need to do um, is, so I've copied here the, um, uh, the um, so the theorem, and the, so, the, so really what we need to show is that if, if x is smooth, then the intersection of um, the fixed point set for u with z min is, um, is smooth. So this is, this is tricky because, um, I mean, in the reductive case, we had that if, if R is reductive, then the R fixed points um, set is, is smooth. And the fact that U is, is not reductive basically means we can't appeal to that result. And the kind of, the idea is that taking this intersection sort of makes it, makes it work. Um, so for, for simplicity, we um, can assume that um, U is, uh, is just um, one dimensional. Um, and the, the, the proof relies on this kind of, uh, I, I suppose, um, in a sense, sort of weird construction, but the idea is we we take um, we construct this variety x prime, um, which is uh, the product of um, a variety w with x. So w is going to be a, a projective um, completion of a certain um, representation of of GL two, um, and we we the point is that we construct W in such a way that there is an action of, of U hat on this product or a linear action on this product. Um, and moreover, this uh, linear action actually satisfies the condition that semi-stability coincides with stability, even though this wasn't true um, for, for the original X. Um, the way in which U hat is going to act on this projective completion of the representation of GL2 is via, via the co-adjoint representation of, of U hat. Um, mapping to the uh, GL of the Lie algebra of U hat, which we can identify with GL2, given the assumption that U is, is GA. So the, the upshot of this is that we can use the kind of the, the main theorem of non-reductive GIT in the best case 
um, which is uh, when semi-stability coincides with stability. And so we obtain a projective uh, geometric quotient for the action of u hat on, on the semi-stable locus um, for x prime. So then the, the last step is we, we then consider the, um, the induced action of GL2 on this, on this quotient. Um, the GL2 action, which is induced from the GL2 action on, on W. Um, and then we can, what we do is we kind of pick an, a nice enough point in the, rep, in the projective completion of the representation. And what we show is that basically X lies in this, in this uh, sub-variety, which we want to show is smooth if and only if the corresponding um, point in the image of the quotient, so basically the u hat orbit of this pair, lies inside the torus, um, uh, fix, the fixed points for the torus, the maximal torus in GL2. Um, and the, the, the next thing is to show that um, by this, this construction, we'll basically get that this subvariety of x is, um, is smooth at x, if and only if actually the, the, the torus fixed points in Y is, uh, is, smooth, is a smooth um, subvariety or smooth at this, this corresponding point. So the, the kind of idea is that we don't know how to show that fixed point sets for non-reductive groups are smooth, but we reduce to, to the case where we're considering a reductive um, fi a fixed point set for a reductive group. So then we can we kind of use the fact that t is reductive to, to show that actually y of t is going to be smooth at this point and then we we can kind of track that back to x and and, and conclude that actually um the 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 variety which we which we were interested in is smooth at the appropriate point um oh right sorry about this um okay so so just to finish um we now know that if x is smooth then x hat is going to be smooth. In the way that I've stated it, it's under the assumption that u is abelian and that, that the GM acts with a, a single positive weight. Um, so the, the advantage now is that we know that if x is smooth, then the cohomology of the um, quotient in the blow up will be isomorphic to the um, u hat equivariant cohomology for the, um, the semi stable locus in, in x hat. Um, and so to compute, we can compute the, the cohomology, the Poincaré series of this quotient from, from the equivariant Poincaré series here. And the question is, um, as always, how do we um, get it from the, the Poincaré series of X? Okay, so, so the, the, the theorem here is um, stated again on this simplifying assumption that, that U is abelian and that the GM action on Lee of U has a single positive weight. Um, and we assume that u hat acts um, on linearly on a, on a smooth projective variety. So, and I make the assumption again that um, the, the, this assumption, which is analogous to the assumption in classical GIT, that the stable locus is, is non-empty. Um, in the, in the non-reductive case, the, the reason why, why we need this is that it, it makes the, the blow-up construction um, uh, somehow easier to, to, to track. Things can go sort of not, not quite wrong, but be, be uh, more difficult to describe when we don't have this assumption. Um, so, so then we can basically, as in the classical case, we sort of um, iterate the, the blow-up procedure and work out how the Poincaré series of the blow-up can be uh, expressed in terms of the Poincaré series of the, of the initial variety. And, and what we get is this, is this big expression. So, so but I've, uh, first of all, I, I've written down this, this part of it, which would be if this is the kind of formula that we got in the, in the case where semi-stability coincides with stability, um, D here is the, is the co-dimension of use admin. And now we need to add, um, add um, uh, information that is coming from, from the blow up. So this, <laughs> this formula looks, um, looks very complicated, but really, um, these, these uh, loci here are basically the centers of the blow-ups at each stage of the, of the construction. Um, and and D, D of I can be, can be expressed as the, as the co-dimension of a, of a closed sub-variety inside, inside X, so the original variety, um, namely those, those points in um, X naught min, which have uh, the, the stabilizer in U hat has dimension bigger than or equal to this, to this D of I. So, so that's the, the formula that we get. Um, and again, I mean, the, once we have these, these formula, we can ask, um, well, can, is it actually useful? I mean, can we actually use it in practice? And so, so this is still um, work in progress, but um, something else which I've been working on is um, constructing moduli spaces for unstable Higgs bundles um, 
on a smooth projective curve. So this is kind of in the same spirit as what um, Vicky was explaining, which is that non-reductive GIT can be used to construct um, moduli spaces for unstable objects. So in this case, unstable Higgs bundles. And um, the, the point, so the, the, the reason um, why I'm thinking about, um, at least in terms of this application of this formula about Higgs bundles of rank two is that um, the rank two case basically um, tells us that we are in the case where U is abelian. And the fact that we are working with Higgs bundles rather than um, vector bundles, because we might ask, well, isn't the first step to, to calculate the Poincaré series for moduli spaces of unstable vector bundles. But what's um, nice about Higgs bundles is that this condition um, that there exists a point in, in Z min with um, trivial U stabilizer is true for, for Higgs bundles, whereas it's, it's not necessarily true for vector bundles. So, so this seems like the kind of the, um, a nice setting to be um, trying to apply, apply this formula. And so it's in ongoing work, um, we're trying to work out what the, the Poincaré series is of um, the, these new moduli spaces for unstable um, Higgs bundles in the, in the rank two case. Um, so I think I will, um, that's all I wanted to say. So thanks very much. Thanks, Eloise. Does anyone have any questions?